big welcome to SWAT Cops here for round two of the Rotex Max South African Championship. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be exhausted after this one. I can tell already. It's lap two, and we really have, <laughs> we've had to switch up in the lead. But as we, as it stands, as it stands, it's hard to call. We're only on lap two of 15, and we really had to switch up. Jesse could see ruin whatever mistake he made for that to happen. But Dane Van Herder, who was livid from his mistake, he's got his name right up there in the top four. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, introducing Akil Alibi. That's right, the debutant is leading in his first race in Cinemax. Now how about that? Ooh, what a way to announce yourself. And he gets a 44.9. As the fastest lap we've seen so far, Jason Katsia right behind him. Charles Fisser. If you haven't heard of Charles Fisser, where have you been? In third place, Dane Van Heerden in fourth, Tate Bishop in fifth, Kai Van Sale in sixth, and Josh LaRue in seventh. Shri Naidu, oh Shri Naidu. <laughs> My brother, feel sorry for him in eighth over there. And Hamza just had probably recovered from the dust that he got a taste of. In ninth place, Brent Walden in tenth, Riley Horner in eleventh, and Jack Rowe, as well as Panema Ngati, closing up the entire field of thirteen. Entire field of thirteen, twelve laps to go out of fifteen laps. Ooh, Akil Adibai, <laughs> rubbing hands. I'm rubbing my hands. We've got a lot of racing coming up ahead of us this weekend. You do not want to switch off that laptop. You do not want to switch off that TV. I don't know where you're streaming this from, but you definitely are streaming it. We're live from Swat Corps Raceway in Pretoria. And we have South Africa's finest. The hottest, the brightest, the youngest. The youngest, <laughs> Akil Alibi, leading at the moment in his debut in the 214 cart. Leading Jason Katia. Not going to be an easy one, but Jason Katia has already made up some of the pace that he lost in whatever overtaking move Akil Alibi had to make. Akil, you can tell how Akil Alibi is thinking. Ooh, elbows, elbows, ties, rubbing. Love it, love it. But they keep it together. Jason Katia, sportsmanship, left hand up to say sorry. And officer getting curb and then some. Curb and grass. That is a crunchy combination of a meal. I tell you what. <laughs> but Jason Kutsia has got the lead again. Dane Van Heerden is in second. I told you, I'm going to be tired at the end of this race. Man. I can't do this. I'm young, but I'm, I'm going to be, oof, I'm going to be old after this one. Because mm. it's switched up again. Jason Kutsia is in the lead. Dane Van Heerden is in second. Is that Shaw Fisser in third? Akil Alibi in, f oh, in fourth. Yeah, that's correct. Akil Alibi in fourth. It has switched up. Mm. Long day of racing ahead. Is, is a senior max member, is officially a senior max member, not only because of the way he started the race, it's actually because he had a growth spurt, a serious one. Was it, was it, a, was it a COVID-19 growth spurt as the lead changes? Yep, Dave Van Heerde giving a nod, saying, okay, let's let's go, let's focus. We're trained now, we're going in my slipstream, okay, no overtaking for the next three three or four laps. But Jason could see a, in first, Dave Van Heerde, second, shot for sir. Third, Tip Bishop in fourth, and Akil Alibi, who I was updating you about. He's a debutant in this class because the uh, young man grew quite a bit and gained a bit of weight as Jason Kutsia. Nice, takes second place. Oh, wow. So, this, uh, oh, he must be living. He just dropped three places in one move. Oh, that's unfortunate. Take Bishop, though, relishing where he is because he's got Jason Kutsia in his view. Dane Van Heerde. See, I told you, I told you Dane Van Heerde is angry. He's livid. I saw how he smacked his go-kart during qualifying. Someone stole his time, is what he must have been thinking. And he's getting it back and then some. Well done to him. Okay, so, Jason Kutsia has a bit of defending to do now. He's, he's had a long day already. We're nine laps into this race. Uh, the greater part of it has gone by. And it's not over yet for him because Tate Bishop has pace and he's copying Jason Katia's homework in that a toll is always the best place to be in turn one. He makes it stick. Well done, Tate Bishop. Tate Bishop is listening to me, folks. He's got, he's got earphones in there. 
and Tate Bishop is smart because he's telling he's telling Jason Katia, let's go, let's focus, let's try and gain a bit of pace because I got more than you, so we can catch Gain Van Yerda if we stop fighting. With the top four, top three fights, uh, yeah, the, the fight for fourth place is where our championship leaders are at. Shin Naidu is the championship leader and he has to get ahead of Sharfisa in order to keep his championship lead. Oof. Tricky. Oh, tricky, tricky. And he's got Akil Alibi. He's like, oh, you rookie, what are you doing? I've got a championship to win. Get out of my way. And that's not going to happen. Ooh, apparently it is. Nice overtaking move. Akil Alibi not letting Shri Naidu get by very easily, though. So Sharfisa is in fourth at the moment. And Shri Naidu is now right behind him in fifth. So this is the championship fight we're about to witness. If Shri Naidu can use this two laps to catch up to Sharfisa, which I don't see happening because Akil Alibi is going to keep him occupied. The exhaust fumes from Dave Van Heerden's cart. He can, he can smell them through his visor, I tell you. Ooh, as you look at the cart, swing Tate Bishop in and out of the seat, side to side. Can he catch Dave Van Heerden with on the final lap with two, three quarters to go? Chicken flag is ready for them. But I tell you what, Dave Van Heerden, ah, man of the match. Man of the match, definitely Dave Van Heerden. We recovered pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Fist in the air, yes, he knows it means a lot to him. Yes, he fought for it. I agree, that's his first national win. Oh, absolutely impressive! Oh, that is very, very impressive for the young man. It means it means that much to him because not only did he have to fight for it, it was his first national win that he was fighting for. As they come down the home straight, lights on, and ho ho, Dan Van Hierdo, what a dive out the outside! Brilliant start. Arji Barji, vintage cutting. That's just, just how it works. Who comes out on top? Tate Bishop ahead of Fissa. Naidu losing out to Dave Van Heerde straight away. Oh, sandwich. Cutting sandwich, anyone? Most expensive sandwich you will taste. You have it, Tate Bishop trying to stretch his legs ahead of Salfisa and Dave Van Heer, they're on the cross, going Valtteri Bottas on us. Brother, make it easy for yourself, my goodness. Beautiful overtaking from Akil Alibi, now he's got um, Naidu, Shri Naidu in his sights. What, what, did Dane Van, what was that Dane Van Heer? They're working so hard to get to third. Let's see if he's able to, oh, he doesn't have any damage. He went, he went on the grass, which usually doesn't really damage the chassis. This damages the driver's ego and infuriates the mechanic who has to clean that. You might have noticed that I said that in a bitter tone because I've cleaned a lot of grass in my day. There he is, Dave Panheda looking okay, seems to have recovered. Akil Alibi is going to trouble Shrien Naidu for a bit. Shrien Naidu doesn't seem to have the pace. Um, Having seen some of these things happen before, Akil Alibi might overtake Shia Naidu and ask him to give him a bit of a breather and, and work with him to try and catch with the top three. We'll see if it happens. Akil Alibi being the debutant, let's see if he's going to take the lead here. I would love to see how he thinks because he's a debutant in this class. Can he lead someone who's... Oh, no! Oh, my goodness. Oh, jeez, I spoke too soon. Oh my goodness, three abreast for a friction of a second with Wyman getting his in there ahead of Alibi who's just made a blunder. That, that, was, a, that was a blunder really, but he's able to recover. Shri Naidu now has Kutsia to worry about, he's right behind him. Not going too well for Kutsia at the moment, not showing the pace he's capable of. But as we go into, or we continue lap 4 of 15, Tate Bishop is in the lead, shot for set second, Dane Van Heerda. AK Valtteri Bottas, you will check the replay, the replays as to why I call him Valtteri Bottas. Jack Rowe in fourth behind Dave Van Heerde and Wayland Wyman, who is now in a feature in today's episode because of Akil Alibi's failed attempt to overtake Shri Naidu.
Okay, looks a bit more subdued and relaxed now. Akil Alibi might line up a move uh, on uh, Wayland Wyman, given that he seems to have more pace than him. I'll, I'll give you an update on the lap times in a second, but by the look of it, he's able to keep with him, so that's usually a telltale sign of being quicker than the guy ahead of you. Tate Bishop, that's him in the lounge, in the leader's lounge, stretching his legs. But he won't fall asleep at all. Shelfers are right behind him. Dane Van Heerden too. Neither of them are slouches. As for lap times, Ted Bishop 43-4, 43-5 for Shelfers, and 43-7-4. Dane Van Heerden, Wayland Wayman is in a 43-9 range. Akil Alibi, 43-8. Like I said, he is quicker by a tenth than Wayland Wayman, so he could overtake him in the next couple of laps. Wayland Wyman is going to slow Australian Idu down. If he doesn't make this move stick, beautiful. If he does it immediately, yeah, that was just going to ruin the rest of his race. Australian Idu still does have a chance to, to catch. Oh, Wayland Wyman is not done. Not to be ruled out. Oh, continue. Ooh, Australian Idu says, nah, nah, my brother. Wayland Wyman says, no right back. It's like a boxing match. I jab, you jab. I swing, you swing. I hook, you hook. And this time around, Wayland Wyman's hook has stuck. And Shrian Naidu has a Jack Rowe right behind him now. But I don't think Jack Rowe has the pace to kind of challenge, challenge him. And Shrian Naidu, uh, perhaps he's seen better days on other hunting grounds. Not on Swat Corps grounds. Not on the sometimes lush, sometimes gold, as you can see, grass. Dave Van Yerde can tell you a bit about the grass, tell you that much. Shred Naidu not able to. I see a card being rolled off. Someone someone just lost a significant amount of pace. Is it Jason Kutsia? He's fallen back significantly. I, I, saw, I saw a card being. Yep, there's a card on the tires. Yeah, that's Jason Kutsia. It looks like Jason Kutsia from here. Yeah. Oh no. It looks like a tie rod that came loose. It, it looks like he's fixing his tie rod. So it's the rod that connects his tire to uh, the steering uh, the steering column. So he's, he's not able to steer at all, basically. When you look at that, um, that screwing motion that he's making with his left hand, it does look like a tie rod. And he's getting his cart back down. Looks like the tie rod was loose. It didn't break or anything, but it was loose. If he gets a push back into, into the race, Got a nice view from here. I've also got a nice view of, guess what? Clouds. Rain clouds. Oh, come on. This is going to be an interesting end of the day. And it's hot enough to give us a few, a little bit of showers. A little bit of showers. We'll see how that pans out. But we're at lap 10 of a 15 lap race. Tate Bishop still in the lead comfortably. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I kill Alibi getting a chunk and a half of curb there. Wayland Wyman saying, okay, I'll share that sandwich with you. No, he doesn't make a stick. And he sticks his hands up. Italian hand gestures. He can't stand what Sri Naidu is doing. Man of the hour, man of the moment in episode two to close it up for the day. Two heat wins on a heated sunny day in Pretoria. Tate Bishop, take a bow, Tate Bishop. You've earned it. That is two wins for him. Well done. We'll see how it pans out tomorrow for him. He can um, get a cold one, as what it, whatever a cold one means for teenagers. But uh, we've got Shafus in second place, and in third place, Dane Van Heerde. Tate Bishop on the front row there. Alongside him will be uh, Shafus. So the two of them basically fighting yesterday. So Dane Van Heerde will also be a concern. He was third in the second heat. He won the first heat, though, so he'll definitely be a concern for the top two. And Bishop looking for a chance now to just sort things out as they go down. Look at the start there from Shrin Naidu as well. <coughs> Shrin diving up the inside into turn one. So he might have slotted up into a second place, but he's got some pressure coming back at him from the 216 and from Charles Fisser. 216, what a move there from Josh LaRue. Didn't expect that. And a uh, maneuver there that uh, Tate Bishop didn't expect, but has definitely helped him out because he's now opened up a bit of a margin over Charles Fisser. Up into the top, good start from Akil Alibai. He started a little bit further back than what we expected, but uh, Alibai already into the top four and applying the pressure onto the back there of Josh LaRue. 
Guru, of course, jumping into that Rob Schumacher team and uh, making it look like it's absolutely plain sailing. But it's the angry man out front that disappears. Tate Bishop looking for a chance now to get away from the rest of this pack, <coughs> particularly from the Tony Cart in second place there of Charles Fisser. Levi dives up the inside into turn one, moves up into third place, and then out guns Josh Garou. Garou now with a bit of maneuvering to happen. You can see Shrim Nader with that great start. Of course, he got caught out as he came out of turn two and just got mugged by three or four cards. He's dropped down to fifth place. Waylon Wyman getting a great start. Dane Van Heer has dropped down to seventh. And Riley Horner just on his tail with Brent Walden and Jack Rowe making up the top ten. Jason could see her yet again with some issues down in 11th place. Not where he wants to be. <coughs> up through the twisties. And Levi now trying to pull away from LaRue. You can see the top two getting away. He doesn't want to let that happen. He needs to get a victory in the bag if he wants to stay in contention in this championship. He definitely knows what to do around this track. He was very good down at Idubi, but so was Charles Fisser. <coughs> Tate Bishop had a bit of up and down day there. Very evenly matched. Unbelievably, the first 11 carts all within the same second. 44s out of the first 11 carts. That's just how tight it is here in Senior Max. Up through the twisties, though. Fist is starting to close, and with that, so is a Levi. Josh LaRue hasn't quite been left off the back. Levi now, first time out for him, of course, in the Senior Max class. Certainly looking like he's uh, made the step up from juniors to seniors look relatively easy. It's not an easy thing to do, that is for sure, particularly when you're in amongst the uh, companionship and camaraderie that is out there. And more importantly is the rivalry. One and two in the championship, sitting two and one on the circuit at the moment. Charles Fisser, the defending champion in second place. Tate Bishop was second last year. He's in the, the lead at this point and, of course, trying to make up some ground after the Adubi round, he's got a little bit of work to do there, but uh, Charles Fisser and Alibi certainly looking like they're in the pound seats at the moment. It's very close between these first three. 15 lapper as they come over the top once again. Originally up the mix there a little bit there from Fisser, trying to see if we can maybe get something special on the squirt towards turn one to close down on Bishop. Absolutely brilliant stuff down on the breaking point now. Here's Tate Bishop controlling things. All three of the first top three and possibly a couple further down. Dave Vendetta as well. Now into the 43 second bracket. Vendetta trying to close down, of course, on Waylon Wyman and get through on him. And then it's a Levi, Fisser, and Bishop that are sitting at the moment, all lapping within the 43 second bracket around the circuit. That is absolutely hauling. So brilliant to see them uh, putting in the lap times that they're doing. Fisser under pressure. Oh, Levi going to try and squeeze him through. That's a tough maneuver to try and make. Watch for him to dive on the inside here, going into the double left. It's a, it's a hard one to make, but if you make it stick, it's a ballsy move, but super stuff there. Very, very close. Diving on the inside, and sure, oh, nearly there. We're expecting to see some big maneuvers at that uh, last corner. The last corner is uh, always a very, very gutsy move if you need to get through there. And uh, you can see a Levi tried there. Just found wanting by a couple of hundreds of a second. They come down, down in towards the uh, pit area and, of course, up into the twisties again. It's a big left, right, left, right, all the way to the top of the hill. It takes them back into contention at the front end of the track and, of course, to the crossover. Fists are putting pressure on to uh, Tate Bishop. He realizes that Levi's coming, so maybe he wants to put a bit of a buffer between himself and a Levi. A Levi applying just as much pressure, so it is so close between these three. Brilliant stuff. There's a move. Bishop went defensive there, but yeah, watch for the cutback. And Tony Cott's going to try and cut back, but oh, he has a Levi all over the back end of Fisser as well. Fisser looking very good. He dives you on the inside, trying to have a move, but uh, can't get there. Fisser definitely uh, the man in, in trouble there, because he's having to do two things at once. Take Bishop, though, is just eating these guys up. Pulling a margin here. It's just over a second now over Charles Fisser. Fisser hasn't had an answer, and in fact, Fisser's lost out to a Levi. A Levi changes up there and gets through on Charles Fisser, must be just through the twisties. So it's uh, Tate Bishop now, who has got uh, Akil Levi into second place. And of course, on his tail now, Charles Fisser. Maybe Fisser was saying, well, listen, if I can't get him, maybe you can. If you can get him, then the two of us can attack him. We've still got enough laps in hand here to close down on Tate Bishop. Hey, breaking coming on to Levi to try and keep Fisser out. And of course, also try and make up the ground to Tate Bishop up the road. Fisser got second yesterday. Bishop took the win. This time, Akil Levi is into that second place. So Levi only got a seventh in race two yesterday. So Kill Levi looking to also make up some ground here. 
Second is good, but first would be better. And as I said, there is enough laps in hand here to possibly still close down. If Fissa doesn't make him fight, two of them are fighting too hard. That's allowing Bishop to get away. Take Bishop 43-2, 43-2, 43-3, 43-6. lap times from the top four as they came across the line there. Bishop, Levi, Fissa and LaRue. Now through the trustees, across under the bridge, heading up to uh, the climb up the hill again. Nice to see the full pack going through there. Brent Walden down in 10th place, just ahead of Jack Rowe. by just keeping Fisser out. But Tate Bishop is just controlling things admirably here at the front end, looking for another victory for the weekend. Great drive coming out of uh, Tate Bishop here for heat number three. Through the switch over. And up into the double left. Easily done for Tate Bishop in the end. Chicken flag is out. He takes the third victory of the weekend ahead of Akil Levi, who will be a lot Happier with a second, they're down in sixth place and seventh place, like he has been. Well, Levi gets the second spot. Fissa comes through for third. And that brings us to the close of heat three of Senior Max. And Levi and Fissa, the first two, Bishop and Kutsia. Watch out for Dane van Heerde. Dane van Heerde will definitely be looking to close things down now and possibly spoil the day here for these guys. He didn't quite get the start he wanted in race three earlier on this morning, but now as they head down towards turn one, Tate Bishop already starting for a chance and uh, Fissa goes defensive, runs wide. Bishop going to dive on his inside. Bishop is going to win the race down, the drag race down into turn one. Oh! He gets real angry down there. And Akil Levi slots into second place as Fissa makes some big mistakes. Dane van Heerde going around the outside and looks like Shrin Naito trying to go with him. Shrin Naidu, I think, has got through there, and Dane van Heerde also, as Tate Bishop gets mugged and forced back down into what is fifth place on track. If you're not where he wanted to be, that is for sure. Tate, Tate uh, Jason Kutsia, I beg your pardon, not Tate Bishop, Jason Kutsia being mugged out there. Tate Bishop leading things out, of course. It's Jason Kutsia rubbing his helmet, going, what are you guys doing? You're making me have to work double time here. LaRue going through there. Yellow flag, we got a Carter coming out there. Looks like it's 2-2. Two, two. Uh, is it 2-1-2? Two, yeah, 2-1-2. Two, two. That's Shrin Naidu. Shrin Naidu. He was second in the championship coming into this weekend and now out of this race. So that is a massive loss there. Dane van Heerde making some big maneuvers up onto the back end of Jason Kutsia and Josh LaRue just ahead of them. So Bishop now with an opportunity of opening up a championship lead here. Jason Kutsia diving through for the four and five spot. Getting up ahead of Josh LaRue and LaRue now with pressure from Dane van Heerde. Dane van Heerde diving through as well. Whoa, what a move there from Dane. Diving on the inside and finding a way through a Josh LaRue. Josh LaRue, I think, got rattled slightly there by the maneuver from Jason Kutsia and then couldn't quite recover and had a little bit of maneuvering to happen there. They've all seen where Shrin Naidu's cart is parked. He's out of this one. So the girl ART team, you'll be concerned about that, but it's Jason Kutsia now up into fourth place. Top three getting away. Tate Bishop, Kiel Levi, Charles Fisser, as we saw in race number three earlier on this morning. Bishop eventually taking the victory ahead of a Kiel Levi and Fisser in third. Fissa wants to change that up. Remember, Fissa, of course, has got this championship number one plate on his cart, and he'd want to keep that if possible. Over the switchback, Jason could see now bringing along the Rue and Van Heerde. Fissa on the inside of Alibi for second place. Alibi tucks in behind him. Those are two ex stable mates out of Team RKT for a while. Now riding for different stables at this point in time and part 14s. Kill Levi looking for a chance now to close down on Fissa and return the favor. Hasn't been able to do anything about that maneuver that was put on him three corners back. Tate Bishop trying to open up a bit of a margin there. Remember, he goes down to his home track for the final round of this championship in Cape Town. Let's see whether or not he's able to do anything about it. The angry man in the cosmic chassis ahead of the Tony Kart chassis, and then it's a second cosmic, although he's not running cosmic colors on that cart. Kill Levi doing such a good job there in third. He got second in the third race of the day earlier on this morning. He'll definitely be looking for a victory if he can. To stay in the contention for the championship, Akil Levi definitely has to get some kind of maneuver on to uh, take a victory here at, at one point of the day. Remember, 
who's got a chance of uh, be a bit of a championship spoiler here. He's looking for a, a possibility of just spoiling the day here for these two, Fissa and Tate Bishop. Akila Levi, if he wants to go to the, the World Finals, they'll have to try and get it into the Africa Open by winning that event later on. He remembers already taken victories in OKJ in the other championship that happens here in South Africa. So Levi, definitely the man to watch out for. Definitely going to be a man who will be there. Be a tough contender coming out of juniors and moving up into Senior Max this year. It's his first season in Senior Max, so he'll definitely be looking for a couple of seasons here. But to remember with the, the uh, caliber of driver and the, the company he's keeping at the front end here with Tate Bishop and Charles Fisser, not going to be an easy day in the saddle for him. But a victory will definitely uh, just help him out a little bit in terms of his confidence. Nairi parked on the sideline, could possibly be spoiling his championship opportunity. Definitely a chance here for the Tony Cart in second and Charles Fisser at the wheel of that one. And the Cosmic Chassis out front and Angry's Tate Bishop to be at the front end of the championship by the end of the day. Heading down to Bishop's home circuit, of course, for the final round. Charles Fisser as well for side of Cape Town. So those two are going to be definitely hot rivalry down at the Kalani International Kart Circuit. Heading back up the hill now with a Levi right on their tail. Change up for the Oh, and a bit more big maneuver there from Bishop. Makes a big mistake, and there is Fisser and a Levi through. Tate Bishop with one little glitch in the matrix, and the two of them just slide through and make up the maneuver to get to the lead and to second. Bishop now with all the work to do with a halfway stage reach, and here goes a Levi for the lead. Akila Levi hits the front for the first time today. Not going to give this one up without a fight now. Card 14 out front, 214 on the side, but of course he runs his card 14 as his team. And as it comes out of the bridge, he's going to be at the front end heading into the twisties. Aliba, Fissa, and Bishop. Oh man, and they they are literally super glued together, those three. You've got to watch out for nose cone infringements here between these three. Maybe not on the first card, but definitely two and three. Because they are so so tight. Literally put that proverbial blanket over there. There's a move on the inside, up the inside line. But no, Fissa said, not a chance are you coming through there. Oh, instantaneous right hand over the over the shoulder looks there from Aliba and Fissa as they both looked over to see what was happening with Tate Bishop. Bishop is not happy. He was leading things out and now drops down to third place and he's losing ground. He's losing ground here big time. It looks like Aliba. Fissa, Fissa with a move. Oh, Fissa on the inside. Dives through into the twisties. Here comes Alibai straight back at him. And Bishop tries to get on the inside. He saw that uh, Alibai went to take the wider line to try and cut back on the inside of Charles Fissa. And Bishop put his nose in there. Nearly made it stick. What a great dice here between these three. No holds barred, that is for sure. This is top quality stuff here from these three. Holding on. They go down there. In fact, it's uh, changed my mind up there. I think it could potentially be. No, no, it's so tight between them. Bishop is applying a lot more pressure than what he was earlier on. The angry man is now looking for a chance to get that cosmic chassis ahead of the Tony Cart. Will he go on the inside here? No, not this time. They start the final lap. Maybe look for it in the last lap. Watch for it down into turn one. Will he squeeze him out? Fissa goes defensive, but watch for Tate Bishop to come and cut back. Oh, and he misses it. He misses the cutback, and Aliba dives through. Aliba dives through. Perfect timing there from Aliba. So it's actually it's actually Tony Cart's one and two now. I thought uh, that uh, we had a cosmic there under the the man in Cart 14's maneuvering. Aliba now pushing hard. Can he possibly spoil the day and go for the win? He's looking good. He is looking very good. In fact, he's going to have a look. He's going to have a big look on the inside now. Can he make that move? Watch it. He set it all up. Is he close enough? Oh, he's half a cart length. It's not going to be enough to go into breaking. And Bishop goes on the inside of him, trying to go through in the final corner. It's Fissa, Levi, and Bishop. A complete reversal of race number three early on this morning. Fissa was third. He goes to first. Levi stays second. Bishop was first and goes to third. Stane Fanita comes through for fourth place. BT on Josh LaRue and Jason Kutsia. Waylon Wyman down in seventh, Riley Horner in eighth, and Jack Rowe just behind Brent Walden for the top ten. Hamza Jassad comes through in 11. 
Kalema and Khadi comes through for 12 ahead of Kaifansel. Shrin Naidu on the sideline is not what Burl ART wanted. To the tram lines they go. Oh, hand up at the back. I'm not quite sure if there's going to be a start there, but everybody heads down towards turn one. Like there is a full start. Dane Fun here to up into second place. What a start. In fact, make that first. As we've got a spinner. Someone has spun out, coming out of turn one. Van Hierde leads as he goes into turn two. Fiss on his tail and the Levi into third. It's Jason Kutsia and Tate Bishop. Bishop getting, ooh, and it's getting real in the back as well. The two, I think it was 289 there, uh, Khalema and Khandi getting a little bit of a nudge through uh, turn three under the bridge. As they went through the tunnel, you can see just a bit of a change up for uh, the front end. This is not what we expected. I kind of hoped that Dane Van Hierde would be at the front end. He did such a good job down at uh, Idubi. Now in the front end of Charles Fisser and Akila Liba. Yeah, a lot better there. So uh, Dane Van Hierde, of course, taking a victory yesterday. He'll be looking forward to another victory here today, here in these conditions. And maybe it's probably the later afternoon that is suiting his cart setter. Maybe the slightly warmer temperatures. Now with that in-house fight for the championship, Dane Van Hierde not really involved in the championship battle, but he's involved with more uh, of a chance of another victory here today. And Fissa and Aliba will be fighting hard with Tate Bishop to try and keep each other at bay. That might give Dane Van Hitter a chance to get away. Not the way Shaw Fissa's uh, driving at the moment, though. He's not getting any room there to Van Hitter, And in fact, pushes him up the hill. He's helping Van Hitter out to try and get through there. Fissa on the inside. Aliba's going with him. Oh, there's a touch there. Coming out of the final corner. A touch between Aliba and uh, Van Hitter. Van Hitter hangs on for third. But Aliba forced his way through and gets up into second. Now Tate Bishop's got to try and find a way through there on Van Hedda. Van Hedda doing a great job to get the whole shot, but now loses out to third place. Oh, and he gets forced wide as well. He loses five and sixth place as well. Could see her diving through and taking advantage along with Josh LaRue to get through on Dane Van Hedda. Van Hedda from the lead down to seventh place in the space of half a lap. Just got rattled there ever so slightly. Rattling carts at the front end there for Fissa and for Levi. These two Tony Kart chassis doing a great job at the front end to keep ahead of Tate Bishop, who's lost a little bit of ground now, having to hit around Dane Van Hedda. It took him a little bit longer than these two were able to. The top two now trying to get away from the man in third place. Remember, Tate Bishop will be uh, looking forward to joining Charles Fissa and this whole pack at the next round in. Uh, Kilani International Raceway in Cape Town. And their home track, of course, will give them an advantage. Akila Libar won't be making it there to Cape Town because he'll be involved, of course, at the International World Finals for Rock. But he's definitely in with a chance here. Coming through into the double left. Over the line they go yet again, and that's another lap completed. So it's Fissa from Aliba, Tate Bishop further back. Further back, and we like, oh, Aliba, thanks for coming. Taking that inside line and finding a way past, then makes his way to the front end. So I feel Aliba now saying, well, yes, I haven't been in this class for a long time, but I'm certainly enjoying the uh, additional bit of power and, uh, of course, the great racing that is happening here between the two Cape Town boys and myself. Four, five, and six now. Could see it. LaRue, Van Hitter. Behind them is Riley Horn. I haven't really mentioned Riley much today, but he's now in the mix here for the second pack of carts. So Josh LaRue onto the back end of Jason Kutsia. Dane Van Hitter's dropped back behind the two of them into the clutches of Riley Horner. To far off the end of Riley Horner is Shrin Naidu. Remember Shrin Naidu had some problems in that uh, previous heat, so hopefully going to be looking to turn his day around. Waylon Wyman down in 10th. Coming into this round, Shrin was second in the championship, but he's now right out of the championship points, having not had a great weekend here at Swatkops. Kill Lee by those, having a fantastic outing. Leading things out at the moment over for St. Bishop, but the battle we're watching at the moment is four, five, and six. Ooh. Very close there for the first place to change up again as Fissa had a good big look. Aliba gets late on the brakes into turn one, squares it up. Oh, it's getting forced big time by Charles Fissa. Goes defensive, Fissa tries a different line, tries to cut back underneath him. Well, they both made mistakes into the turn two there. Fissa losing out big time. 
Fisser looks like he's got a bit of an issue there because he's fallen right back into the clutches of Tate Bishop. So Fisser, whatever he did wrong coming out of turn two and into three, didn't work out for him. He ran ever so slightly wide, put those Mojo tires onto the dirt, so maybe just cost him a little bit of about half a second. But half a second in karting could be that distance. So the lead now opens up for Akil Levi. In second place, Charles Fisser is now into the clutches of his uh, fellow uh, provincial man from the Western Cape. These two are going to be fighting hard now. Maybe work together. Might not be a bad plan to catch a Levi. Things stay the same as they are right now with one more heat of racing still to go. The championship will not be decided here. They're going to go down to Cape Town and Fisser and Bishop will fight it out for honours in 2020s. Incredible about the Senior Max at this point in time looking good. The Senior Max Championship is wide open. And Fisser go for back-to-back -back championships, that's what he's hoping for. But Tate Bishop will definitely be looking to take that number one plate away. Down awards, turn one. Defensive lines coming out of Charles Fisser. Going defensive into turn two as well. Bishop has a look. Not close enough to get that angry cosmic of his ahead of the Tony Cart. Dane Van Hitter once again has closed up onto the back end of Josh Leroux. They've got both got ahead actually of Jason Kutsia. Kutsia's dropped down into uh, sixth place on track. So as I said, it hasn't really gone the way of the third Cape Tonian out there, Jason Kutsia. Two, three going through, waiting for four and five. Van Hirda and Kutsia coming in. Where's LaRue? LaRue's gone. Josh LaRue's gone there. Josh LaRue falling by the wayside and out of harm's way there in terms of the first five. You can see them coming through the background. The red cart has dropped. No, he's there. He's there, but he's just dropped back slightly. He's just dropped back slightly behind Dane Van Hirda and Jason Kutsia. So LaRue losing some ground and falling back into the clutches now of Khalem and Khandi. Khandi coming through there and looking for a chance for uh, top five even. Leroux goes through. Oh, he has a change up. Oh, a little touch there. I think that might have been Waylon Wildman coming through. Shrin Naidu comes through as well. And uh, Khalema getting dropped back ever so slightly. Looks like he's under attack now from Jack Rowe and from Shrin Naidu. Shrin Naidu now get the front end of the second back. Waylon Wyman behind him. Riley Horner in the mix of that as well as this uh, second pack of cards comes down into turn two and three. There we go, up the hill again. Second group of cards making their way up the hill yet again. Following. Shrin Naidu, Riley Horner, Waylon Wyman in there too, and uh, Mkhandi. Brent Walden in that little pack too. Walden had a great outing, in fact, down at uh, Idubi. And he's definitely not uh, on the same kind of pace here at Swakops. Three by three, four by four into turn two. Very close as they go through there. And they line turn eventually through turn three. Top three now into the last part of this race. Fisser looking dangerous, trying to find a way through on a Levi. Levi going defensive. Oh, Bishop finds a way through. Fisser tries to change up his line to get through on a Levi, opens up the door and pouncing on that opportunity. Take Bishop to second. Bishop now looking to get to the front end. He definitely wants to have an advantage going into Cape Town. He knows just how good his uh, fellow Captonian is at the Kalani International Raceway. Alibi won't be there. Oh, and Alibi having to stand on the brakes there and actually got out of the cart, out of the seat. Nearly high-sided himself out of that cart. Fisser looking for a way through and gets ahead of Bishop. Bishop with a bit of a problem. Alibi getting out of shape there and getting out of the seat of the cart. Bishop went to take evasive action and uh, now given an opportunity to Fisser get to, to get back into second. Fisser on the inside for turn one. Aliba is late on the brakes, but Fisser's better. He's going to cut back. Oh, Aliba doing it to perfection there on the cutback. Brilliant driving from Akil Aliba, realizing Fisser might run wide. It's exactly what he did. He got on the brakes early, 
attacked on the inside and retook that position with a lap and a half to go. It's one second separating the top three. Absolutely nothing in between them as they cross the line. And a lap and about three corners to go for these three. Fisser on the inside trying to cut through on the switchback. Not a lot of people have done a maneuver overtaking into the switchback. But now going defensive to keep out Tate Bishop. Watch for the different line. Also trying to get the drive onto the main straight. Alibi looks over his shoulder, goes defensive into turn one. Trying not to compromise too much of the drive. Oh, here comes Tate Bishop. Bishop and Fisser coming together. Bishop looks back. Fisser says, well, you wanted to try and have a go. I was there. You can't go through me. You've got to go around me. That's how it's going to finish up. There's going to be no change there. Now, Levi is going to just keep it all together for the last couple of corners. Fisser in second and Tate Bishop in third. Jason could see us just off the back end there, but not close enough to uh, potentially be in a threat for mistakes that were made by second and third place men there. But it's a killer Levi for the checkered flag again. And Levi with another victory. Just a spoiler in the points that are available for the two guys fighting for this championship. Flags out, and it's a Levi to take the win. Part 14, Akil Liba taking the victory in the fifth heat of today's racing. And this is turning into be a really hot contested class. Senior Max beaten out by Akil Liba, first in second, Bishop in third, and Tate with Jason Kutsia behind him. Jack Rowe into five, Shrin Nainu, good recovery up into six, and Waylon Wyman into seven with Dane van Heerde, our pole man and whole shot man, getting down into eighth place eventually ahead of Riley Horner, Kai van Sel, Brent Walden, and Mkhandi. Josh LaRue with some problems in the closing stages, along with Hamza Jazat. Always the 14 cart of Alibi, I should say, not choice name on. Alibi tucked in behind there. Similar uh, uh, overalls, of course, there. Alibi has to try and spoil the day here a little bit for them. But Fisser goes on the inside, and Tate Bishop forcing a little maneuvering at the background there. Could see her having to go on the very far right. Alibi dives on the inside, takes the lead, and takes the lead of this race by a long way. Where is Tate Bishop? He's then fifth. Fourth or fifth, yeah, fourth place for Tate Bishop. Not where he wanted to be, that's for sure. But it is a Levi from Fissa. Fissa from LaRue. LaRue from Tate Bishop. And Dane van Heerde with a bit of pressure coming out of Wayman Wyland, I think. Wyland Wayman up there as well, doing a super job as they come through. So look and see exactly how it sorts itself out there. Coming up over the top and completing the first lap in anger. And Alibi leads out. Tate Bishop's got everything to do. He's in second place in the championship. He's in fourth place on the road. He's losing points to Charles Fisser, who's in second on the road. Charles Fisser on 250 points. Tate Bishop on 248 points. 35 and 32 to play with for first and second. So it's going to be very close between these guys. Waylon Wyman up into sixth place behind Dane van Heerde as they come up the twisties. Look out for pressure coming from Jack Rowe just behind Waylon Wyman as well as he tries to get into that top six. Van Heerde in fifth place at the moment on his own. Two by two as they go into turn one. Oh, Levi goes defensive. Keeps out Fissa. Fissa tucks in behind him. Fissa getting a little bit of uh, frustration there. What was that all about there, please, Mr. Levi? Still no change up between LaRue and Bishop. Tate has not got through there. Charles Fisser looking for a way through, can't find it just yet. Killer Levi soaking up the pressure. Looking for a way past. Coming up to the back. And into, oh, change up on the line. Watch for the drive out of this last left-hander. Shaking and stirring there and looking for a chance. No. Levi keeps him honest. There's Tate Bishop diving through. The Rue was fiddling for something there. It completely messed up his braking marker. And, he's, and you see Dave Van saying, what are you doing? Fister tries to go around the outside of uh, Levi. Runs wide. Oh, and Tate Bishop goes on the inside. Oh, and he loses up to Dave Van as well. I think he may have spun out of the tunnel where he managed just to catch it. He's just caught to Josh LaRue going up his inside as well. LaRue forces him. He loses three places after a mistake. And Fisser is now in big trouble. So it's now two carts between. Fisser down to sixth place. Waylon Wyman has got through on him as well. Pressure coming from Jack Rowe and Riley Horner now onto Charles Fisser. 
Charles Fisser just getting a little bit too aggressive there and falling by the wayside. Here comes a move. Wyman on the inside. LaRue tucks back at him. Oh, Josh LaRue with a different maneuver there of note. Here comes Fisser. Fisser going to go with LaRue. And on the inside of Waylon Wyman, he gets up the inside. He gets through. Riley Horn into the mix as well. Jason Kutsia just behind that. It's anybody's race there for uh, the third, fourth, and fifth place battle. And it's Dane Van Heerde in third place who's getting away just up the road from this little battle. And uh, following Akila Levi and Tate Bishop. Bishop in second place now. And Fisser down into uh, what is fifth and sixth place. Be a change up in the championship lead. He might just overtake Charles Fisser or be on even points going into the round that both of these gentlemen are waiting for. Their home track advantage. Brilliant stuff here from these guys. Absolutely amazing race action. We've had it all weekend long from Senior Max and they're putting it on once again here for the last heat of the day. Wyman. Horner. Could see her behind him, but it's Fisser out front to this back. Can he see Dane van Hedder yet? If he comes through the switchback, he won't see him. He might just see him going into the last corner. But Dane van Hedder is definitely coming through towards the potential third place. Fisser in fourth. Five is Wyman. Six is Horner. Seven is Kutsia. Charles is making mistakes. Two to go now for Akila Levi. Two for Tate Bishop for second. Two for Dane Van Hedder. 43-1, 43-5. a second quicker than Dane Van Hedder. He might be able to get him. There's two laps to go. Charles could still be in a chance here for a third. Second place, Dane, Dane Van Heerde in, being reeled in by third place, I was going to say. Third place going to be reeled in here by Charles Fisser, potentially on the last one corner and lap to go. They start the final lap, Dane Van Heerde looks over his shoulder, he knows Charles Fisser's coming. Has he got enough in hand though to keep him out? Checkered flag comes out as they are right now, it's advantage Tate Bishop by one point into the final round of the championship. If Fissa gets through on Dane van Heerde, it's equal points going to the final round between Fissa and Tate Bishop. And he's right there. Fissa wants by. Fissa definitely wants by. Is van Heerde going to keep him out? Oh, it's tight. Going over the switchback. Charles Fissa going to go on the inside. He's going on the inside. As they get up the inside, there we go to the leader. Akil Levi is going to take the win. It's going to be Tate Bishop in second. And it is Fissa in third. They are on equal points going to Cape Town. That is mind-blowingly close. Second place gives Tate Bishop 32 points, brings him to 280 points. And third place gives Charles Fisser 30 points. And he was on 250. They are on 280 points each heading to Cape Town. It's officially a civil war in the Western Cape at the final round of this Rotax Max South African Championship for Senior Max. Dane Van Heerde in fourth place, Jason Kutsia, and then Waylon Wyman, Riley Horner from Kaifan Sale, Jack Rowe, Shrin Naidu, Hamza Jassat, Brent Wyman. We take a trophy, we take a, a photo, tough you put weekend, the trophy down. Brilliant racing and, uh, between the two Cape Town boys with some other oaks thrown in. Yeah, you know, it was a very good weekend. I actually enjoyed it a lot. Um, definitely didn't expect uh, to uh, win the day and uh, be tied first for the championship. Um, yeah, we struggled a bit in practice, just finding the right setup. But clearly we got it licked as we won the second race by 2.5 seconds. Um, but yeah, it doesn't take the fact away that the others drove amazingly, you know. They put up a really good fight and it was probably one of the best races of the year. I really enjoyed today. For me, so in cutting the races, it was one of the best races of the weekend. I think what cost Charles was his over, he was over aggressive and it cost him constantly and that is how Charles races but now here's the thing, position. you and Charles go to the final round, equal points to both your home circuits, how do you think that's going to play out? Yeah, it's going to be crazy, I mean both of us are extremely quick around the track especially with uh, Jason Katsia and Kai for sale also being quicker on the track they're also going to put up a fight 
But uh, yeah, um, I definitely want to get the upper hand in Cape Town with the setup and stuff. So yeah, we're going to be practicing a lot. Is there another national championship looming? I hope so. Um, it would be amazing to Charles win another. Charles is the reigning champion and you would like to take that away from him. Yeah, you know, my rookie year, being uh, the youngest in the class, being only 14, turned uh, 14 in June, it'll be amazing just to win the championship against guys like almost about five years older than me.